In the small town of Comstock, Texas, near the U.S.-Mexico border, there's a team of archaeologists fighting against time to study these, some of the oldest rock paintings in North America, made by the native people who lived there between 1,500 and 4,000 years ago. In the last, say, 60 years, we've seen elevated uh, levels of deterioration of the sites. Um, and whether that's due to climate change or, uh, you know, raised humidity levels, we're not exactly sure, but we do know that we are starting to lose some of these panels. That's Karen Steelman, the science director at Schumler Archaeological Research and Education Center, a nonprofit that researches the paintings of the lower Pecos Canyonlands. She's a chemist working among those archaeologists studying more than 300 sites, and using high-resolution photography and x-ray technology, Steelman and her team are trying to uncover and record history that could soon be lost. Heavy rains and dams built on the Rio Grande can drive water levels high enough to touch rock paintings and wash away the history that's been sitting there for thousands of years. And lately, flooding is becoming more and more common. That's why in 2017, Shumla embarked on the Alexandria Project to get baseline documentation of these panels by making panoramic photos and 3D models of the paintings, getting what data they can about how these panels are painted. It had to be fast, and it had to keep the paintings in as good of condition as possible. So why does Schumla need a chemist like Karen Steelman to do that? Well, beyond the radiocarbon dating and the spectroscopy that she does in the lab, she's hiking out to these painting sites with the archaeologists to help them, using portable analytical equipment. One obstacle archaeologists have is that there's a thin layer of minerals that's built up over time on the paintings. And that makes the colors and figures harder to see with the naked eye. For more thorough inspection, archaeologists like Schumla's founder, Carolyn Boyd, have often used digital microscopes to look at chunks of these walls that fall off over time, and they can see layers of paint, sometimes several on top of each other, under that mineral buildup. But they don't want to hack off a piece of the wall every time they want to see how exactly the paint is layered. After all, they're trying to preserve the paintings, not destroy them. So that's where Steelman comes in. And a lot of people will say that the paintings look faded but it's just really that they're obscured by maybe a 50 to 100 micron um, accretion of mineral growth. And uh, when we're using the X-ray fluorescence technology, we're able to penetrate that and then see those, those underneath layers. She and the researchers at Shumla saw an opportunity in X-ray technology and came up with the method of documenting paint layers that they use now, which takes advantage of new portable X-ray fluorescence instruments, or PXRF instruments for short. You can just hold them up to the wall and get an idea of what's under the surface. The way XRF works is basically, let's shoot X-rays at something and see what comes out. It starts with the X-ray radiation knocking low energy electrons off of the atoms in the paintings. With those electron holes left behind, higher energy electrons swoop in and fill the gaps, emitting photons in the process. These photons have specific energies that correspond to the atom that spit them out. So by measuring all the photons' energies, you can figure out what elements are in your sample. So that's what the PXRF instrument's readout tells you after just a minute of holding the detector up to the wall. No wall chipping required. Knowing what elements are present behind the layers of paint and buildup has helped support a theory that Schumel archaeologists had about paint layering. In several of these murals, the entire black portion had been painted first, before any other color was put down. Then the red portion, then yellow, and then white. That layering order might seem like just a small fun fact, but archaeologists found this pattern held across many other sites in the region, and they think it means something big, like that each of these panels was made deliberately as a meticulously planned work that tells a cohesive story. Some archaeologists, like Carolyn Tate of Texas Tech, are drawing on Schumla's work to see if these images represent something more like a written language. So it, it, it holds up this whole discovery of the layers of paint which led to the compositions, which led to the conventionalized symbols, which leads into sort of the development of graphic communication systems and writing. That, that's just huge in, for, in terms of the cultural history of the Americas. The hope is that the paint layering data can tell researchers more about what the paintings meant to the people that made them. So in the White Shaman mural, which stands near the U.S.-Mexico border, Schumla looked at this spotted deer painting with a digital microscope. It looked like it had 11 black dots under its red outline. But look here, is that black region nestled under the red paint a 12th spot, a dark bit of rock, or something else? Schumla researchers couldn't tell even with digital microscopes. But using PXRF instruments, Schumla confirmed the presence of manganese, which is found in black pigment, and that it was, in fact, a 12th black spot. 
is a chemist, I'm kind of like 11 dots, 12 dots, you know, does it matter? But it does because these were intentionally painted and intentionally put on the wall. It wasn't um, just, you know, randomly put up there. Specifically, archaeologists at Shumla think the number 12 could link the deer to a Mesoamerican deity called the Lord of the Dawn. And it would follow that the people who made these paintings could have shared a core belief system with the people who eventually became the Aztecs and the Huichol. That potential link was brought to light with XRF data after these rock paintings had sat there for thousands of years. So, Shumla is still chipping away, figuratively, at this cultural history. And Karen tells us that with the changes to the landscape and the climate and border policy threatening these paintings, the time to document these sites is now, before the region's stories are lost forever. She also told us that they're always looking for interns, so if you're interested in carrying a backpack full of cameras and x-ray equipment and hiking out to these sites in the southwest, we've got more info on Shumla in the description. Huge thanks to Karen Steelman for helping out this video, and thanks to Carolyn Boyd, Shumla's founder, who's been studying these paintings and people since before PXRF data even existed for them, and thanks to you for watching. If you like this video, click subscribe. If you didn't like this video, then also click subscribe. Why not?